James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is July 21st, 2022, 2 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a KP5 index geomagnetic storm currently, and I would have thought that this would be straight solar winds from the huge coral holes that we had earth facing over the last several days. So I'd like to point out that this is from 1500 to 1800 UTC time. Prior to that, we were running at KP3 index, i.e. really nothing. All right, looking at our real-time solar wind on Discover, we see that from 1500 to 1800 right here is when we had our highest plasma. Where did this plasma come from? Well, I didn't know that we had another CME on the way. There were some smaller C flares that showed up on GOES, but maybe something didn't show up on GOES. Uh, maybe GOES was manipulated. This is 35 centimeters cubed of plasma. That would be a coronal mass ejection, not solar winds. I was expecting solar winds to kick in already. I believe that they were held down by this heavy plasma here, as you can see. And as soon as the plasma let up, we're seeing a spike in solar winds, although I think they should be at 500 kilometers plus per second currently. Now, they might bounce right back up there. I see a 466 print right here. Uh, I don't know, again, what caused this plasma buildup. It was a long-term event, and you can see it ended up with plasma over 34, 35 centimeters cubed. And, well, well, well so, we showed a geomagnetic storm from 1500 to 1800 UTC time. You have to check everything they do. Now, heading over to NOAA's KP index breakdown, July 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 2022, they were expecting a geomagnetic storm and disturbance, but they thought that this would begin at noon and end at 6 central time, my time, or i.e. 1800 to 2400 UTC time extending into the next day, as you can see here, creating six hours of geomagnetic storm. Although we are already in that, and ladies and gentlemen, it is 1900 UTC time currently. So we're looking for more geomagnetic activity. I guess they're not planning on it being plasma because the plasma has died off. We'll take a look at the WSA Inlet Prediction Center. And then they have a second larger impact happening later tomorrow. Uh, we've been expecting that. That's been forecast from NASA, NOAA, and the EESA. And that looks like a very long-term event that will take us into the 23rd. And it might be a double whammy. The original plasma headed towards our planet that was going to hit on the 22nd with the CME created by the sea flare and tsunami early this morning or late last night depending on how you look at it catches it the one-two punch but they are looking at it appears to be nine hours of geomagnetic storm and 20 hours of geomagnetic disturbances so it's going to be a bumpy ride over the next few days. We can expect an earthquake uptick because of this. All right, now this was all changed. This is obviously the Inlil Space Weather Prediction Center. Uh, and they have some extremely heavy plasma hitting Earth on the 23rd or really tomorrow evening. Central time here in the U.S. It looks like a double whammy. I don't understand how it could hit stereo A, stereo B, and Earth at the same time, but I'm sure they have a great, great explanation. I also want you to notice what they've done with solar winds here. It's downright scary.
why didn't we get an uptick in solar winds from those two huge coral holes that were earth facing if that was real and what is this wall that we run into before the plasma gets here usually the plasma pushes your solar wind down here we have it going up over 800 kilometers per second this would be as fast as i've ever seen solar winds hit our planet god bless you and yours folks it's going to be a bumpy ride starting at some point now please share please subscribe and always remember anything is possible in bizarro world